Welcome to Kyle Anthony's UFC betting show. I am Kyle Anthony and welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the prediction show for UFC Fight Night 188. We've got Cody Garbrandt versus Rob Font. We're going to talk two free plays that we have on this card. We are coming off a miserable performance last Saturday night at UFC 262. Had back-to-back -back sweeps on client plays, and we had the wrong kind of sweep last Saturday night. Did not hit on our client plays, completely whiffed, was not happy with our free plays that we gave out to on Vivian. Thought she snuck by uh, Shikagian when it got to the decision. Did not get that as our dog play there. It was just, I mean, even um, quickly, we're going to talk about the main event. I mean, I thought Chandler actually was going to put away Oliveira in that first round. It looked like the knockout was going to happen. I was giving away $150 to anybody who liked and retweeted my post. You can check that out. Follow me at Kyle Anthony UFC. I was going to give out $150 if Chandler knocked out Oliveira in the first or second round. Uh, it looked like it was going to happen in that first round. It did not happen. Oliveira, I mean, hat off to him. I mean, he really went out there. He, you know, weathered the early storm, which looked like it was pretty much an end of the road for him early, uh, late in that fight. And then I think Chandler got a little too excited and thought that, you know what, I, I almost finished him in the first round. And he came out a little too, I think, comfortable. A great hook. Changed the fight. Champ is now Charles Oliveira. So with that being said... You know what? What are we going to do? Not a good show. But with that being said, we're going to go on to the next event. And that is one great thing about UFC. There are constantly UFC events almost every weekend and another opportunity to go out there and make some money. So let's do that. And let's do that this weekend. So we're going to talk two free plays here. Uh, and again, follow, like, retweet, all those great things. I appreciate everybody doing that. So let's dive into the first play. And it's going to be the main event of the evening between Cody Garbrandt and Rob Font. Right now, we've got the line basically out of pick them right now. You've got, you know, I got uh, at least uh, FanDuel is showing Garbrandt minus 104, and you've got Rob Font at minus 118. Like we always do here, we're going to go down three plays, the last three fights for each fighter, see what we see, if one fighter can expose the other fighter, and if the line makes sense to place a wager. So the first person we're going to go over is Cody Garbrandt. Now, three fights ago, he fought TJ Dillashaw. He was just coming off of a, a knockout loss against Cody in the first round. We all know how that went, and we probably all know how this one went, and not too much I think you can really take away from it, but we're gonna go over it very quickly here. When Cody Garbrandt faced TJ Dillashaw the second time, and this was one where a lot of people said, Cody's gotta go and relax. He's gotta go and relax, he's gotta be calm, he cannot be emotional, that's been his big downfall. Um, you know, they saw it in the, in the first fight with TJ where it's just, he went guns blazing, these big wide hooks, He's looking to throw, and then, you know, TJ being able to go in there and find his chin. This is a situation here early in that first round. You did see that they both kind of had a feeling out process, and pretty much the first half of that fight was kind of feeling out. You know, they, they both kind of pitter-patter some shots and, you know, just kind of circling each other, and both of them kind of a little bit of trash talk going on, you know, throughout, the, throughout that first round. And it really took one nice shot where TJ got hit. Now, TJ got, and as soon as that happened, it's almost like Cody is just so bloodthirsty to get that finish that he throws everything back out the window. And when he caught it with a nice shot, crowd went crazy, he kind of looked to swarm, and that's where he almost pretty much, you know, threw everything out the window, went for the big shot, TJ caught him, and that's when he got dropped, got rocked, got on top of him. It looked like actually Cody was going to maybe survive that. It looked like he was maybe going to survive kind of that, that early onslaught. But then he landed another big shot, TJ, <coughs> on Cody. Cody goes against the fence, and then TJ just unloads, throws a barrage of shots, ended up getting called, <coughs> excuse me, a quick decision, I mean, a quick knockout victory for him in that first round. But you saw again that what Cody did. You know, you know, we're going to talk about that, and that's going to be, you know, a, a piece of this entire puzzle that we're going to put together here and make our play is really on that fact that, you know, he... he he just has that emotional part where he just can't get out of his own way. He's got great skills. He's got great power. He's got hand speed, good footwork. But this kind of thing, he needs to get in under control. So in that fight there, he does suffer a knockout loss against TJ Dillashaw. After that, two fights ago, he faced Pedro Munoz. This was a fight where it almost felt like a great situation for him, where Pedro, there is no bad blood. 
Uh, Pedro not really known for his hands as much. You know, you know, you know, you know kind of a, a well-rounded, grinding kind of fighter. And this looked like a, a pretty good situation for him. Stylistically, a pretty good matchup for him. Going into the fight early, once again, very relaxed. Both guys were relaxed, calm, you know, pitter-pattering some shots, but you saw the hand speed. How much better the hand speed was of Cody Garbrandt against Pedro. You know, Pedro, you know, not known for his hands by, uh, by any means, um, but he's got the leg kicks, he's able to chop you down a little bit, and it looked like that's what, you know, the, the, the plan was for Pedro. And kind of trying to lure in Cody into really a firefight, really get him into that firefight. And <clears throat> Pedro drops Cody, and again, what, it's almost like if Cody hurts his opponent or his opponent hurts him, it's, you know, everything's out the window. He's just going to start firing shots, looking for the big hook. And that's pretty much what happened here in this spot. Cody gets hit. Cody got emotional. And then Cody just started seeking the big shot. Now, the big thing here, obviously, that's different is that, you know, Pedro has a fantastic chin. He's got a granite chin. He can take shots. We've seen him in past fights. We've seen him where he could just go out there, take a beating, and just keep pushing forward, have that pressure, keep going forward. And that's basically a big weapon of his where he knows my chin's better than Cody's chin, and we're going to sit there and we're going to slug. And, you know, and, and even Pedro talked about that uh, at the post-press conference and even said, you know what, we were hoping this was going to happen because we felt if we're doing shot for shot, I'm going to win that spot. This is going to, even though Cody has the power, quicker hand speed, all these things, it's going to work out well because you just really got to clip him once or twice and fight could be over. And that's what happened there. Pedro ended up, you know, utilizing his chin, going in there, landed the kill shot, dropped him, fight over, knockout victory for Pedro Munoz in the first round. So there you have it there. And then most recently, we have Cody facing uh, Rafael Sunsau. This was an interesting fight here, which we all know again how this fight ended. Um, but if you really kind of take a look at it into the stylistic matchup of how this took place early in that first round, and you definitely saw a big change from Cody. Cody definitely, you know, changed camps, you know, was looking to kind of, although he's still with Team Alpha Male, but looking to kind of just change his, his style. You know, obviously, you know, you know, trying to get some certain things under wrap, filling in those gaps. And a lot of patience again, and we do see that, and, and, and he had that in the other fights where he was, you know, not as, you know, not emotional, you know, trying to be patient, and it doesn't take much for him to kind of throw it all out the window. And this is a spot here where you saw a mass amount of movement from him, and that was something I think worked perfectly against the against the stylistic, match, stylistic matchup of a, against a Sun Sao, because Sun Sao, a little more flat-footed, you know, a little more deliberate with his forward pressure, you know, he, you know he, he'll try to kind of have that pressure, but he's not very quick, um, and, you know, he'll utilize, he's kind of the guy, grind it out, get on top, you get in your face, brawling, and when he goes up against somebody like Cody, I think he kind of wanted the same game plan that Pedro had, kind of get in your face, let's trade, and here Cody said, you know what, I'm going to utilize my, my, my uh, range, I'm going to start bouncing around a little bit more, be in and out, I'm going to have faster hands, have faster footwork, that's going to work big time in his favor. And the thing that I think Cody added, which really, really, I think, threw off um, a sun sound was the leg kicks. It was something you didn't really see too much in the, in the past fights, heavy boxing attack, uh, from Cody overall, but here started really chopping away early, and that was, I think, a big game changer for Cody in this fight. I think it was a massive game changer. Really, again, a lot of movement, landing some good shots, moving around. Into that second round, though, is when you saw the leg kicks actually really have an effect on a Sunsell. Sunsell, you could tell, was switching stances. He did not want to leave, I believe it was his left leg out, didn't want to leave his, his leg out. Uh, you know, was trying to switch stances, didn't, you know, he, you know, was starting to really, you know, slow him down. And that's really where, even though he was kind of trying to keep Cody into uh, the corner, trying to work him into the corner, the good footwork, mixing it up a little bit, worked out perfectly. A Sunsell started landing some nice significant shots, which I think the statistic was was in that second round, I think a Sunsell actually had more significant strikes in him. But the fight was going in Cody's way. When the first round was his, the second round, you know, how, you know, already habilitated that a sun sound was on his leg. It definitely was helping Cody. And then we know what happened with seconds left in the in the second round. They're both, you know, the sun sound kind of trying to corner him again. And Cody lands the big bomb, drops him, fight over, right at the bell, gets the victory there. But again, a, a good performance and a different type of Cody, which I think is going to help him. And something that he could use going into the Rob Font fight on Saturday night. Now, on the other side, we've got Rob Font. You got Rob Font. He is uh, a minus one eighteen, 
and you've got the three fights ago, he fought Sergio, uh, Sergio Pettis. And against Pettis here, this was really a one-sided fight. A striking bout, uh, you know, you know, Pettis definitely has good skills. We just saw him, you know, fight recently. You know, he's got some good skills. He definitely can mix it up pretty well. Fast, you know, light on his feet. But Rob Font really just laid it on him. I think, you know, Rob Font utilizing the jab, utilizing a lot of his striking, great boxing, great rangy striking, you know, kept the pressure on. And pretty much, again, in this situation here, really wasn't much that Pettis had overall. Every single round went to Rob Font. We're not going to dive into this one too much, but really every round went to Rob Font. A good, good showing for him there. He goes out there and gets a decision victory. Two fights ago, he fought Ricky Simone. Now, this was an interesting fight. Now, because you've seen certain troubles with Fun when he goes up against grapplers, goes up against wrestlers, where he's, you know, you know, he's, again, another guy just like Cody, you know, heavy boxing, that's their offense, that's pretty much what they bring to the table. And against Simone here, this was a spot here where you actually saw Fun look to take, you know, uh, Simone down early. He lands some big shots. Both of them were exchanging. Now, the big part of this fight here was really the continual takedowns from Simone. He just kept getting in there, getting the takedowns, you know, throwing big power shots, and then trying to level change, trying to utilize that as his offense to just slow down. Obviously, he did not want to stand as much with Font, where he's going to have, you know, Font's going to have that advantage there. Again, his boxing skills are very slick, quick developing combinations compared to Simone, who's more power, more aggression, more looking for those takedowns. And he went in there and he was able to do that, you know, a few times in that first round, a few times in that second round. But when they were standing, it was Rob Font. He was landing big shots, good counter, good striking. Again, you saw the jab, really setting up his offense. And the one thing I thought the takeaway of this, I think, for the most part, was that, you know, Font definitely can be taken down. But the one thing is he is really good at getting up. His scrambling ability, I think, is very, very high. I think it's very good and underrated where because he is the boxer and that is kind of sometimes that path where you want to go in there. You want to take him down. You don't want to be standing with him. And he was able to, even in really bad spots where, you know, almost, you know, full mound or side control and, you know, Ricky Simone, who's a, who's a strong power wrestler on top of you, Font finds a way out. I thought it was impressive. I thought he actually looked really good in those spots. But he goes out there, gets a decision victory in a tough, tough fight. Ricky Simone, definitely a good fighter and a good win for Font overall. Then uh, most recently, he fought Marlon Marais. This was an interesting fight here where you've got guys that are pretty much two strikers, although Marais does have grappling credentials. And right away, you've got Marais who seek the takedown. He went for that. Right away, dove in. I mean, it was maybe within the first few seconds. Got the takedown. I think Font was kind of thrown off by that a little bit. Font was uh, on his back. And pretty much, you know, that whole round was pretty much Marais on top of him. You know, trying to ground and pound a little bit. Trying to get top control. Trying to maybe just steal that round. Which, in a way, knowing that Marais' gas tank is just not very good. It was a lot to take out of him in that first round. But again, you did see Font get taken down, he gets taken down, and he bounced back up in one spot. And then again, just, you know, relentless for Marais. You know, I think, again, that really threw Fod off because he just wasn't expecting this whole first round to be all grappling, all clinching, all wrestling. And I think that's what threw him off. But then he gets out of it, they ended up standing, and as soon as they stood with maybe, I don't know, I think it was a minute left or something like that, in that first round, it looked like Marais was gassed. And then Font just teed off on him, landed some big shots, dropped them, ground and pound, gets the knockout victory in that first round. So there you have it there, a nice showing from him most recently. Now, with all that being said here, um, you know, really you've got Cody Garbrandt, you got some great boxing, he's got great solid footwork, uh, good movement, great hand speed. That's been something that he has, his great hand speed, has the power mixing with that hand speed. You've seen him knock out a bunch of guys. Uh, in the past prior to these losses and you know and, and obviously against the Sun Tzu. Um, but the one thing there I think that you can say is that you know Sun Tzu is 38. You know it, it's not that you know Sun Tzu's not a bad fighter by any means. He definitely you know is a, is a proven you know grizzled vet within the UFC. But you know he's 38 going on 39. You know that definitely may downgrade that a little bit. Although Font did lose to him I think it was about three years ago, four years ago, somewhere in there. Um, but the other side, you've got Rob Font, who another great boxer, rangy striking, got you know has that grappling. Uh, I'm sorry, the scrambling ability, which does help him in certain spots. Here, I don't think it's going to matter. I'm, I'm pretty sure Cody's not going to be looking to take him down by any means. Um, and I think those are some of the things that you know they're very very similar when it comes to that. 
But the big issue, the elephant in the room when you talk about Cody Garbrandt is going to be his glass chin. And that is something that I think that they're going to really try to protect. And when it comes to kind of the style that they've decided to kind of you know adopt and, and, and kind of force Cody into is, you know, Cody is an aggressive striker. He wants to be, you know, he gets, he gets in there, he wants to drop those bombs, he wants to land them, and that gets him into trouble, and, and that's something that we, at everybody, you know, all of you guys watching this have seen, when a guy's got a glass chin, the guy's got a glass chin. It, it doesn't go away. I mean, sometimes there's situations where maybe a fighter is, you know, moving down in weight and, and maybe maybe it gets a little bit, you know, maybe there where, you know, just the, the hydration and he's weaker and, he, and he's able to get clipped and we've kind of seen that in certain spots. But here's a situation where you, you see it, he gets flash knockdowns, knocked down a lot and, and he never was really hit in, in, a, in a good spot there you know it wasn't like there was a big shot that a sunset landed that really kind of tested that again like hey does he have it he kind of that's really why he kind of stayed on the outside worked his footwork that's a big part of what his offense is going to be I think on Saturday night against Rob Pawn. now that's obviously something the other part is um the emotional part you know is, that, is he going to get emotional there again? He didn't against the Sun Sal. It looked like he was very patient. Let that kind of you know subside, which is definitely going to help him so he doesn't just go in there and throw these big hooks. And that's the issue with it. You know, He has that hand speed, and he's got that, those, that massive power, and he wants to land it, and he's seen how he's dropped guys. But he throws these big hooks in the pocket, and you know, you've got someone like Rob Font who has really good boxing, He's going to be getting hit in those spots, and that has to be worrisome with anybody that's going to be backing Cody, that he's going to be getting hit. It's not like it's with a sunset where he's going to be able to kind of move around. I think Font has a little bit more movement. But the other side, you've got um, you know, Rob Font, where I think the only times where we really see Rob Font having issues in the cage is against grapplers. It's against guys that could get those takedowns. You know, those you know, like, you know, where he's really kind of bouncing on the outside, and he's kind of a little bit more worried to kind of let those hands go because he's, because he's a little bit worried about those takedowns. This situation, he's not going to have to worry about that. And a big advantage for him also is going to be the six-inch reach advantage that he's going to have over Cody Garbrandt. I think that to me, you know, is a massive, massive advantage. In a situation where you've got two guys that are going to be boxing, you know, this is going to probably be a glorified boxing match to the most part. I mean, you've seen Cody kind of start utilizing some of his leg kicks, and I think that's going to help him. Um, but you've got somebody like Rob Font who's going to have a great jab. He's very long with his strikes. He's not one guy where he's going to, he needs to be in the pocket. Cody really isn't someone who sets up his his combinations. He's not someone that really, you know, looks to jab, jab, and work from the, you know, he, he's just big shots, big shots, big shots. And I think somebody like Rob Font is going to be able to kind of set those up, utilize his jab, set up his offense, utilizing the jab. And if he needs to, I think Font can look for the takedown against Cody. I don't really believe that's something, but I think he's going to be the better grappler. I think he's got, you know, the better striking. And I know that some people are saying Cody, Cody, you know, Cody's got it. And he's got the better chin. So I think a lot really goes in here at a pick em price here. I like Rob Font here. I just... There's just so much more to like about him. I don't like betting anybody that has a glass chin, a proven glass chin. Um, and even again against, you know, you know, you've just seen him consistently have that until he can really stand in there and show that he can take a shot. And he did beat a Sun Tso. I know that's part of it. But again, a Sun Tso did not test the chin. Rob Font will absolutely be testing that chin. Can he get the win? I believe he can. Um, can he knock him out? There's a possibility there too. So really, I think that you know, over over five rounds, three rounds, you know, ten rounds, you know, I think you know, Font is going to be able to go out there and and win over win minutes. Go out there, have the pace, put out good combinations, land a little bit more. Where Cody's really, I think it's it's a knockout or bust for him. I don't really see that he's going to be able to go out there and just you know go out there and outpace, land good shots, push. I think that the six inch reach advantage mixed in with the great boxing and his really long jab, and you're going to see that jab land on Cody's chin all night long. So I do like as my free play Rob Font to win in the main event. Uh, and then the other one we're going to just quickly throw out there is another fight. It's between Justin Taffa and Jared Vendera. And this one here, you've got Taffa who's roughly. Um, you know, minus 185, somewhere there, minus 180, and then you're seeing the other side, Jared's about a plus 160. Um, real quickly, 
I am a big fan of Justin Tappa, and ju I mean, I just like the way he fights. I think that he's underrated. Um, you know, he's four and two in his MMA career. The two losses are a little bit suspect. I mean, he had a loss against uh, DeCastro, which was a quick, quick fight where he kind of just wildly went in and got caught. Anyone, you know, and you see DeCastro, I don't really think that he's anything special, but it was just he landed a perfect shot, put out um, Taffa, and then most recently he lost against uh, Carlos Felipe, and this was one where I, you know, we actually had as a client play was Taffa plus 165. I thought that was an easy decision victory where he won two rounds to one. It ended up going the other way, crazy enough, but it wasn't that great of a, a showing for Felipe. I thought Tapa did enough there to go out there and get the victory. And again, you know, Jared here on the other side, you know, he lost against Spivak. Um, you know, you know, won on Dana White's Contender Series against an iffy, um, uh, an iffy fighter. And, you know, I, I don't really see a lot there. I think this is perfectly set up for a knockout win for Taffa. I'm willing to take Taffa here at minus 185. I will probably be sprinkling the knockout plus 100. I think that's a good price also. I think both these guys would be our, our, our big guys. They're good. Someone's gonna be landing there, and I think Taffa is gonna fight a lot smarter, and I think he's gonna able to go out there, push a little bit more volume. I love his body kicks. I love his leg kicks. I think he lays out a lot of power out there. He doesn't have to land many. He can land just one. I think he goes out there, he gets the knockout victory, and gets up to cash in. So those are my two free plays for UFC Fight Night 188. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody subscribing, liking, commenting. You know, it's, it's you know, a horrible, horrible showing last week. I don't even want to think about it. A terrible, terrible showing. But again, get back on track this weekend. I'm excited about it. Look forward to talking to everybody on Twitter at Kyle Anthony UFC. This is Kyle Anthony's UFC betting show, and I'll see you next time.